The road is long, still in a winding turn. All right, guys, don't hate. Don't hate me, guys. Okay, fellas, who's here? I'm here now. I'm late. How you doing, people? Everyone, anybody here? Anybody out there? Okay. How you doing, people? Kind of late. What's up, Sai Christian? Ver, God bless you. What's up? Sorry, yeah, I'm just waiting. Remember, there's a lag. There's like a six to seven second lag. So just give me a couple minutes, folks. I am late, man. I was supposed to be on hours ago, but you know how life is. How's everybody doing? I know it's late for some of you. It's actually past 11 p.m. Central Standard Time. It's past midnight Eastern Standard Time, New York and Canada. I hope we got some late birds on. What's happening? Well, Sai Christian, I ate too much today, bro. So I pray in Jesus' name. By the grace of Jesus, I don't gain weight. I keep losing till I get to my goal. I got to, bro. Flatten out by the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. But welcome, everybody. Just waiting for my boy to show up. Let's see if he's going to show up. I can't reach my phone. As you can tell, I'm in a hotel room. I'm out of town. I'm actually with David Wood and Al Fadi. Right? Could you make short videos to dismount Jim Martin his own books? Okay. I'm actually out of town. I'm here with David Wood and Al Fadi. We're here. We're going to do some pre recorded shows and some live shows, Lord Jesus willing, for the next couple of days. And then, Lord Jesus willing, I head out with David Wood. And sometime next week, if Jesus Christ our Lord wills, by the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ, <clears throat> we're going to be doing a lot of live shows next week. Welcome. I know it's late. I don't expect too many people to show up. But hey, oh well, I promised. I said I'd try to be here if I could. So I'm here. Let me just uh, send out the word. Hold on. One second, guys. We'll begin in a minute because I want to discuss <clears throat> the recent talks I had with Chris LaSala. Did you guys watch those videos? <clears throat> Chris LaSala. I, I don't know what the name of his ministry is. I had challenged David Wood to debate, I guess, on the Trinity, and so... I then saw one of the videos and decided to challenge him. And by the grace of God, God's providence, we did two shows, one on the Trinity. And the second show we did on whether Christ is still truly human in heaven. Is he the God man? Does he have a physical body? It's on his YouTube page, <clears throat> Chris LaSala. That's actually the name of the YouTube page. Lord Jesus willing, I'll try to upload it to my YouTube page in due course, in due time. Just get, guys, give me a couple of minutes. I'm just trying to announce. I'm hoping that my boy, Protestant believer, will show up or first and last to post verses for me. But in the meantime, if you guys have some questions, feel free to ask. Let me just do this. Hold on. Life, man. Life. Sometimes it throws you curveballs. Okay. Hey, Orbiter, you're here, brother. Okay, I didn't see you. Yeah. Protestant believer is Orbiter, man. And first and last is here. Okay. Guys, I don't expect too many people. It's kind of late. And first and last, uh, Orbiter, is it too late for you guys? Or are you guys okay? Can you hang? Hold on one second. All right? Can you hang or is it too late for you guys? Hagia Sophia Films. What's up, Revelation? God bless you, brother. Yeah. I was going to do one at noon. If you guys have been following the announcement... I had initially announced that I was going to do 12 o'clock p.m. Central Standard Time. But guess what? This, again, is the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. I thought my flight was at 5 p.m. I went and looked at my itinerary, and my flight turned out to be 2 o'clock, which is why I had to cancel. And then I thought I was going to be able to do it around 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. But that, too got canned or 5 p.m. Central Standard. Yeah, no, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. And then I thought I was going to do it at 9.30. But we got busy unpacking, settling in, and 
<clears throat> brainstorming for the upcoming shows. Okay, with that said, hold on a second. Everybody ready? Everybody ready? Hold on, let me invite this guy. All right. Oh, is that, is that how it works, Corn Chandler? You might fall asleep. I know that in the UK, it's what, seven in the morning now? Or six in the morning? People are just waking up. Man, I look like a deer in headlights, huh? Okay, if you guys are ready, I'm ready. Let me know, guys. I did this because I don't want to disappoint you guys. And hey, pray. Pray that this year will be the year by the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ. I build up the YouTube page and start producing smaller clips five minute clips 10 minute clips 15 minute clips on various topics relating to christianity and or islam and the cults as well as doing sessions where i go in depth on core christian doctrines for the glory of jesus christ i need to build up this youtube page beatify it by the grace of god make it more professional by the grace of god revelation did you just wake up or did you go to sleep are you tired or are you up yep i'm with uh, david wood and al fadi We'll be joining CP or CP will be joining us tomorrow, God willing, if the Lord wills. Anyway, <clears throat> did you guys listen to the dividing line today with James White? I know he mentioned me, I think, in the last part of the segment, but I didn't listen to it, the dividing line. Anyone listen to that? No? All right. Just again, there's a lag. Okay, Revelation, let's see if you, maybe you can hang with us. All right, let me just ask the Lord to bless us and pray that more people come in to benefit from this session. I mean, look, David Wood does a live stream and he gets 800 people. I do a live stream, I don't even get 100. Anyway, it's not about numbers, but the only reason why we care about numbers is because I want to reach more people for the glory of Jesus. May God keep me humble, crucify my flesh, save me from my flesh, Save me from the fruits of the flesh and destroy my pride and arrogance. Not to do it for fame, fortune, or money, for the glory of Jesus, but I do want to reach more people. And if you go and listen to my discussions with Chris LaSala, even this young man, even him, confirmed the anointing of the Lord upon me, his unprofitable, worthless servant. He talks about God blessing me and gifting me in an amazing way unlike any he's seen, to be able to recall scripture, interpret scripture for the glory of Jesus by the power of the Spirit. And may the Lord Jesus get all glory, honor, and praise. May he crucify my flesh and bury my flesh and keep me humble and teachable and pure, purified in the blood of Jesus Christ so I don't get puffed up. Because it's easy to get puffed up in this ministry, folks. It's very easy to get puffed up and become arrogant and proudful. And once you get puffed up, you're of no use for the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, first last you saw, right? He was blown away. And that's all glory to the triune God. May the Father, Son, Holy Spirit be glorified, magnified, and praised for that gifting. May he keep me humble and teachable and pure and holy and in love with him. Right? So keep praying for me, folks. Pray that God in his mercy will continue to empower me to get my health back, to get healthier, to be holier, and to trust in him more and more because we love him. So I just want to praise the God and Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We beseech you, Father. We, we beg you, Father. We plead with you, Father, to bless this session, anoint me to speak truth without error, to fill us, fill me, and fill David Wood and El Fadi with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with the fruit of the Spirit and crucify our flesh and mortify our flesh and, and destroy the fruits of our flesh, Father. Save us from our own sinfulness and save us from <clears throat> the temptations of the evil one, Father, to keep us pure and holy in love with you, in love with Jesus, in love with your Spirit. And Father, grant me clarity of thought tonight. Anoint my mouth to speak truth without error. <clears throat> to recall scriptures and interpret them correctly for the glory of Jesus. To bless your people and strengthen your people and empower your people by your Holy Spirit working through me for the glory of Jesus, Father. Have your way with the session and have your way with the upcoming sessions. Anoint <clears throat> the bond, the, the union, the unity between Al-Fadi, David, myself, and Christian Prince. Seal us by your spirit and wash us in the blood of Jesus Christ. And Father, we ask you that you bless our loved ones and protect them. Fight for our loved ones, for my daughters. Keep them in love with Jesus. Keep them healthy and holy and provide for them and cover them with the blood of Jesus. They need you, Father. We need you. And please, Father, grant me the health that I need to serve you and glorify you. 
We love you. We love the Lord Jesus. We love your spirit in Jesus' name. All right. Amen. Sorry for the background. I'm still using a prehistoric Mac. Lord, will, Lord willing, Jesus willing, I'll be getting that new Mac within a couple weeks because I'll be joining David Wood at his home. And hopefully we'll get that new Mac that you guys helped us financially with. And God bless you for that. And keep praying for the finances. Please ask the Lord to continue to provide for our financial needs for the sake of my children so that I can get on my feet, do the ministry for the glory of Jesus, not to be a beggar of men, but the beggar of Christ to provide so that my daughters will lack nothing. And I depend on no one but on the goodness of Christ to do the ministry. With that said, before I even begin what I want to talk about, Sai Christian knows my situation very well. Sai Christian is a good friend. Yeah, dear brother, I love the guy, even though he can get on my nerves, but that's just life. He knows my situation. I can't get into too many details. So I'm going to mention here because I need your prayer warriors to pray for me and fast for me. Fast for my daughters because this June 26, I got an issue coming up where I need the Lord Jesus to intervene and save me because it has to do with a financial burden that unless the Lord Jesus intervenes and saves me from, I won't be able to meet which, it, which can actually take me out of ministry. So can you pray for God's miraculous favor and protection on me and my girls to get me out of this financial situation for June 26 and fight for me and save me from the snares of the evil one using a corrupt judicial system to try to destroy me? Could you pray for that? If you guys truly believe the Lord Jesus has set me apart for ministry, set me apart to glorify his name, then Jesus has to fight for me. He has to show up because I can't do this. I cannot win. I cannot beat this corrupt judicial system. It's evil. It's corrupt. It's satanic at its core. Only Jesus can fight for me and my children. So please pray and even fast June 26 for miraculous favor that the Lord will sustain me, that Satan won't take me out because of financial woes so I can continue to glorify Christ because I want to serve Jesus, live for Jesus, love Jesus, preach the word of Jesus and die for Jesus and do this until the Lord takes me home. So that's my pressing need for June 26. Pray for our sessions. Pray for our unity, our bond, David Wood, Al Fadi, myself. Pray for more doors to open where I travel more to more places, being used more mightily by the power of the Spirit for the glory of Jesus Christ. And pray that God will miraculously protect my two angels, my two daughters, nine and six, covered by the blood of Jesus, filled with the Spirit, and that I can be in their lives to be Jesus to them. All right, guys? Now we can begin. We can discuss. <clears throat> the last time that I was on, we were discussing the death of the God man, and I wanted to continue on that theme of the God man and also cover some points in my discussion with Chris LaSala. Pray for that young man, him and John and his team. If you listen to our sessions, the first session was pretty heated because I didn't know where they were coming from. But by the end of the session, I could see their sincerity. And I can see their openness to what the Bible says. And here's confirmation. In the second session, we had a discussion on whether Christ still has a flesh body. And in that session, you will see his humbleness and willingness to accept correction and change. He admit, admitted several times where I made a strong point biblically and he could not respond to. And even in that session, he repented of his doctrine of soul sleep. He used to think that when a person dies, he ceases to be consciously alive. In that session, he admits, I'm wrong. I abandoned soul sleep. I don't believe it anymore. You've convinced me. And that's all glory to the Holy Spirit of the living God. But that tells you his willingness to accept correction, his willingness to be open to what the Bible says. So keep praying for him. Pray for his family. Pray for his, his ministry. Pray for the people affiliated with him. because. He is not a Trinitarian in the traditional sense, right? His view of the Trinity, though not completely Orthodox, as I've said it, and I'll say it again, it's not completely heretical. In other words, his view of the Trinity leaves a lot to be desired, but at the same time, it's not full-blown heresy so that I cannot condemn him as a heretic. And... Ironically, James White took issue with it on his dividing line today. 
and he made a comment about it. I didn't listen to it, but I saw that when he posted a dividing line, he mentioned what I had to say about this young man whom I consider to be a brother. Pray for him that he'll come into the fullness of the truth of the triune God, right? So keep praying for that. But if you guys want me to discuss the humanity of Christ, some of the points that I brought up, as well as some of the issues we had against Jesus Christ being the most high God. Let me, let me explain what his position is. He believes the Father alone is Jehovah. Yes, please do me a favor. If you want to see this ministry take off, hit the like button, get more people to subscribe to this channel, you know, and spread the links to these discussions for the glory of Jesus Christ. And keep praying that God will bring more people and put in people's heart to partner with me financially and prayerfully. But coming back to the issue, let me tell you what they believe. They believe the Father alone is the Most High God. And the Father alone is Jehovah. Okay, They believe that Jesus Christ wasn't created from nothing. And the Holy Spirit wasn't created from nothing. What they believe is that Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, was brought forth out of God's own being, God's own essence, God's own substance, God's own nature. God bless you too, basic technique. So let me explain what he believes. He's not an Arian in that, unlike Arius, he doesn't believe Jesus was created from nothing or the Holy Spirit was created from nothing. He believes that Jesus was brought forth out of God's own being, just like Eve came out of Adam's being. Is everyone with me? Yes, I pray, Samuel, prophet, the Lord hears you, right? This is what he believes. Okay, do you understand what he believes? Chris LaSala, the gentleman that I had the discussions with that I don't consider a heretic, even though his view of the Godhead is not completely orthodox, but it's not damnable heresy, and he's still open, and I see the Holy Spirit bringing him to the fullness of the truth. So pray for him. Go watch the sessions. You'll see he was open to correction, and he stood in awe. All glory to the child God, Father, Holy Spirit, you get the glory. He was in awe of the Lord's anointing on me to recall scripture and interpret it the way I do. You'll see it. He even praises me up a storm. And that's not the reason why I'm saying these things about him. But coming back to the issue, he does not believe Jesus was created from nothing. He does not believe the Holy Spirit was created from nothing. He believes that Jesus and the Spirit proceeded. Christ was born out of God's substance, God's own being, and the Spirit proceeded from God's being, so that in one sense, the Son and the Spirit have always eternally been a part of God, always eternally resided within God, but not consciously. Just like Eve was a part of Adam, but she only became a separate conscious being or person when God brought Eve out of Adam. So she wasn't from the dust, she came out of Adam. So in what at what point she was part of Adam. That's what he believes about Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So does everyone understand what his position is? Do you guys understand what his position is? Before I move on. Okay, do you understand? He doesn't believe Christ was created from nothing and the Spirit was created from nothing. He believes that the Son came out of God's substance, his own being. Yeah, he does. He says Jesus is God, but he's not the Most High. And I'll explain his position, and I'll show you some of the points I brought up to show why that position is not biblical. So Revelation 22, 13, just as long as you understand what his position is, so I can go into the scriptures and talk about how you witness to these individuals who are not Arians. Jesus came out of God's own being. The Spirit came out of God's own being. So in one sense, the Son and the Spirit have always been a part of God, within God, and came out of this being. So they were not created from nothing, like Eve came out of Adam. Is that clear? Do you understand what he believes? May the Lord Jesus beatify us with his beauty, make us holy and fill us with the Spirit, and give us the health we need. Please, Lord Jesus. Okay, you understand his position now, right? Okay, he also believes that the Father holds ultimate authority, and he has authority over the Son and the Spirit, so that the Son and Spirit are not equal to the Father in authority. But he does believe that the Son and the Spirit are of the substance of the Father because they came out of God's being, even though the Father is greater than them in authority. He keeps saying that. And he thinks somehow that Trinitarianism is incompatible with the belief that the Father 
is the head of the Son and the Spirit and has authority over them. And I said, no. Historically, classically, Trinitarianism has, has always taught Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are fully equal in essence, nature, power, and glory, but the Father has authority over the Son and the Spirit. This was known as the monarchy and is still known as the monarchy of the Father. So I go, it's not incompatible with Trinitarianism, historically speaking. All right, hold on a second. I got a surprise for you guys. One second. Don't go anywhere. Hold on. Wait, wait. Yeah. We're just starting to warm up. So come on, say hi so I can go into this issue. See, I just mentioned you. You got to blow me up, man. I don't got the 800 like you do. It's right. late. I, I don't got 800 like you do. Guys, guess, guess who's here? We'll start doing a better job. That's right. Well, where are you at, man? Guess who's what? here? I'm not even on there. Where am I? I don't know. You got to come a little closer. Oh, it's a delay. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. It's a delay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. First of all, you do better if you didn't do amateur rookie mistakes like have a light right in the background. All right. So you see that? Up. All right, hold on. Did you catch who's here? I told you, man. We're already going to be better. See, it's much better. Then open up one. Open up. How about that light over there? Say hi to them real quickly. Just say hi. I'm going yeah. to tell them, tell them we're getting in shape. We're going to work out. Hey, what's up? <clears throat> um, I figured I saw Sam was live. I figured he's uh, pretty much boring you guys to death. <laughs> so uh, I thought I'd come and add a little little excitement, little entertainment. So this is the book you were talking about, huh? Yeah, that's one of us, yeah. That's right. What else do you mean? Ah, people are saying much better. You see that? Yes. Yeah, All right. That's why I need David Wood in my life. He's going to make me explode and take off. Right? Come on, son. Oh yeah, uh, guys, we'll be uh, we'll be going live on my channel tomorrow at eight o'clock with me, Sam, and Al Fadi. We'll actually be in the studio. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and then starting probably Thursday. No, it won't be Thursday. Starting probably Friday or this weekend, yep. me and Sam will start going live um, every night for probably a couple weeks, um, taking all challenges, free for all, free for all at night. You guys. <clears throat> Yeah, see, Tippy Bear knows it. She says, "Lights on the face, not behind the face." Thank you, Tippy Bear, Bear, or whatever. Tippy now, I, PA, Tippy now for, fortunately, I mean, to be honest, we <laughs> should all be thrilled if Sam puts a bunch of light behind him and his face is completely dark. Um, it's probably the nicest thing he can Hater, do. Man. Hater, 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 put down the Hater, Hater, son. Uh, Spartacus said, uh, "Love the video of Socrates." We got, yeah, we got a lot. Uh, we're, we're planning on doing one of those a week, indefinitely. Until my head gets chopped off. <clears throat> All right, you want to get back to your topic? Whatever you I'll want. I'm just in the background, man. Yeah, because David's got to get beauty sleep for tomorrow. We got a long day. And he needs a lot of beauty sleep. Look at his mug. That's a face that even a mother can't. Oh yeah, we do need to get we do need to get sleep. Yeah, you gotta get up. So I'm gonna be all right. Yeah, we're base we're basically recording. Uh, we have to be downstairs at eight o'clock, and then we head to the studio at eight thirty, and then um, we're basically recording all day. The entire day cranking out shows um, for Al Fadi's channel. And then same thing on Thursday. And then we take off Thursday. And keep praying for the shows. Hey, uh, uh, <laughs> Hagia said, uh, Sophia said, uh, the Socrates video was brilliant. The Socrates one was actually a, a trilogy. Um, so we recorded one on Socrates. And then we recorded another one with Socrates. We recorded other ones. Um, but uh, we the Socrates one was a trilogy. Um, I haven't released them yet. I'll release them uh, sometime. But in part two, Socrates, it just starts over. And Socrates is talking about Muhammad's view of uh, the creation of the universe. Now, as Sam, Sam, can you confirm that the Quran simultaneously claims that Allah created the earth first, then the heavens, and also claims yes. that Allah created the heavens first, then the earth? Definitely. Yeah. yeah that's chapter 41, <clears throat> verses 9 and 12. Can they hear? Quran, chapter 41, verses 9 to 12. Chapter 79, verses 27 to 33. And chapter 2, verse tw 29. Tw chapter 2, verse 29, just to name a few places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, uh, we do that, and then we deal with uh, the problem of the Quran um, affirming the scriptures of the Jews and Christians while also um, contradicting them. So that's all in part two, but throughout part two, Socrates is, is getting deja vu, right? He's like, I feel like we've done this before. I feel like we've done this already, right? He doesn't understand what's going on. And then Muhammad blows him up in the end. And then for part three, Socrates comes back and he's like, wait a minute, I do remember this. 
am I in hell? Are we in hell right now? And so he starts freaking out that he's in hell because he likes to have intelligent discussions and like his eternity is now uh, having conversations just with Muhammad. So it's hell for him, but Muhammad points out that a philosopher's hell is a prophet's paradise. And then Muhammad quotes, <laughs> quotes himself in Sahih al-Bukhari where he said that he just wants to, uh, to be martyred and then come back to life and get martyred and then come back to life and then get martyred and then come back to life again. And so this is actually turns out to be Muhammad's paradise that he gets to keep killing people and then coming back and killing oh, people and coming back and killing that's people and coming back. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. See, he learned everything from me. See? Yeah, 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 yeah. As we all know, Sam's uh, Sam's a uh, great um, uh, video production skills. Oh, let me turn on all the lights behind me. That that'll look good on the camera. Uh, all right, you want to come get back yeah, to your topic? He's got to get get up, man. He's got serious need of beauty sleep. Yeah, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to sleep. But uh, again, we should be live tomorrow, yes. um, eight o'clock, my channel. And Sam, uh, for for, the, for, uh, for those of you who also need to like me need to go to sleep, um, Sam's gonna help you right now. Yep, by I talking a lot. Some, some, yeah. They call <laughs> Sam's nickname is uh is is L A Liquid Ambient, right? <laughs> Doesn't make any sense. Right? This guy's got. You can see he's about to. Let's say out. let's say AI. People yeah. think it stands for audio audio or uh, uh, artificial intelligence, but it's actually a uh, audio ambient. How about that? Yeah. Audio yeah. ambient. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I'll go and uh, uh, I'll go to my room and then probably have Sam Shamoon on in the background. I'll be out in like two seconds. <laughs> uh, Kieran Samia. Uh, Pray for that, man. That mug is a – even a mother has a hard time loving. All right. I'll see you in the morning, hopefully. Yeah. All right. La, la, Luther. Luther. You all right now? What are you going to do? Take a picture of me again? I'm just going to hear – uh, Yeah, yeah. Just steal my book. Any, if you say anything uh, heretical, I'm going to slap, yeah, yeah. slap the crap out of Just head. steal my book, huh? Is that what you're going to do? All right. Ooh. So I'm going to plug this in. They can't hear you. But maybe that's a blessing to them. You're, you're all right, right? Mic? Yeah, because what? Because because uh, – that's me. I don't know why I'm doing it, but I'm doing it. Oh, dude. Yeah. Hey, go ahead. When you get to my house, your uh, your new laptop is there that people. Yeah. Did you hear that? Story. I was telling them that I was going to go and you'd have the new laptop and I was thanking them for their support. So pray for this man. You can't cure ugly. Only God can do that. All right. Okay. So I'll put him in. All right. All right. I'm going to sleep. All right. I'll see you. Good night. Get as plenty of beauty sleep as you can, man. Every second of it. You both like a twin? Who's a twin? Man, I'm much better looking than this guy. All right. You guys ready? My grandma and your grandma. Okay. Are we ready? We ready now? All righty then. All right. Just want to make sure. I know you guys got excited because you saw the dizzle. Okay. Now, going back to the issue of the God man, going back to the issue of Jesus Christ being truly God, truly human. And also articulating what Chris LaSala and his group believe. You understood what he believes, right? Chris LaSala. And go to his YouTube channel, Chris LaSala, and watch the two discussions. The first one was more heated than the second one. Because then I finally figured out where they're coming from, and I saw his heart. Okay, but you understand his position now? That Chris LaSala does not think Jesus is created from nothing. But Jesus was born from, from, from the Father. God begot Jesus out of himself, right? Spiritually birthed him from out of himself. So this is why I said that his view is not completely heretical. I can't condemn it as heretical. I can't condemn him as a heretic. And the reason why is, and I'll post the links in the description box after the session. If you actually read, if you actually read the church fathers before Nicaea, now, guys, you need to pay attention to this. Here is where you need to pay attention because I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm about to say. And I'm going to give you links to the articles where I quote these particular apologists, church fathers. The fathers before Nicaea, Tertullian, a great man of God, a great apologist, <clears throat> Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, just to name a few. They were Trinitarians, but their articulation of the Trinity wasn't as precise as how later Trinitarians came to articulate, formulate the doctrine of the Trinity. So let me repeat, they were Trinitarians, but the way they explained Jesus Christ's relationship to the Father and the Spirit's relationship to the Father wasn't as precise as later Trinitarians. And in fact, today's Trinitarians would be uncomfortable expressing 
the Trinity the way they did, formulating the Trinity the way they did. For example, Tertullian believed that Jesus Christ wasn't always the Son. You with me there? Bird brings the word. I is basically capturing the what they believe, the gist of what they believe. Tertullian didn't believe that Jesus always existed at the Son and didn't believe that God was always the Father. What he believed was that Jesus is the Logos, the reason that existed in the mind of God, so that Jesus as God's reason or Logos always resided in the mind of God. And then at the moment when God wanted to create, he then summoned forth, brought forth that reason, that Logos, that word, and that act of summoning him forth is when he became the son and became a distinct person from the father without separating from him. You with me there? You see what he believed? Justin Martyr believed something similar. Now, there is a debate whether Justin Martyr believed that prior to that act of the father bringing forth the Logos, the reason within his mind to become his son in order to use him as the agent of creation, whether that reason was a rational person in communion with the father. There's a debate whether <clears throat> they believe that that Logos, that reason within God's mind, was a rational person whom the father communed with. Some of the fathers did believe that. <clears throat> Some doubt whether Justin Martyr believed that. But the fact is, none of them believe that Jesus was a creature or the Holy Spirit was a creature. None of them believe that the Father created Jesus from nothing and the Spirit from nothing, but that the Son and the Spirit always eternally existed as a part of God within God. Yet, Jesus wasn't always the Son. He's the reason within God's mind, the Logos in the mind of God, that God then summoned forth, brought forth when he wanted to create all things because then he summoned that reason within himself, brought him forth to use him as the agent of creation and that act of bringing him forth, that's when he becomes the son and becomes a person distinct from the father, though inseparable from him. So you understand how they articulated the Trinity? That's how they articulated the Trinity, the pre-Nicene fathers. I just want to make sure you understand. I'll give you the links where I quote them, and I quote also scholars affirming this is what they taught before I move on. Do you guys understand it or no? And I hope I'm not putting you to sleep with this because I do cure insomnia. Okay, now. Why is this sweet? Oh, that's his? Oh, that's his. Okay. Okay, now. <clears throat> They also believe that Jesus Christ is Jehovah of hosts, that he's the Jehovah of the Old Testament. That's where Chris LaSala differs from them. Like them, he believes that Jesus was a part of God eternally and then was brought forth. God birthed him right before creation, and that's when he becomes the son and a distinct being from the father. So that's where Chris LaSala is similar to the father's. But where he disagrees with the fathers is that he doesn't think Jesus is Jehovah. But they all said, Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, Tertullian, they all said that Jesus is Jehovah of hosts of the Old Testament, the Lord of hosts of the Old Testament, the Jehovah who appeared to Abraham, to Moses, and to the and to the prophets. That Jehovah was Jesus in his pre-human existence. So do you see why I said I cannot condemn Chris Lasala as a heretic, though I disagree with his view? Because his view is similar enough to the anti-Nicene fathers, the fathers before Nicaea. And he, was, he kept telling me, well, why, why don't you then agree with them? I go, because they were mistaken. They were not heretics. They were Trinitarians. But the way they expressed the Trinity wasn't as precise. <clears throat> Their formulation of the Trinity wasn't as accurate as later generations and wasn't as faithful to the scriptures. Because my ultimate authority is the Bible. So I test them in light of scripture. And where they're wrong, I acknowledge it. Where they're right, I accept. But the fact is, Tertullian, Justin Martyr, Irenaeus, these fathers were Trinitarians, even though their formulation of the Trinity wasn't as precise or accurate as later generations. They didn't believe Jesus is a creature. They didn't believe the Holy Spirit is a creature. 
the Son as the Logos, the reason, and the Spirit eternally existed within God as a part of God. And it was at the moment of creation when the Father summoned forth his reason to become a Son and summoned forth the Spirit. And at that act, the Son and Spirit became personally differentiated from the Father while separating from him. The way they articulated wouldn't be as precise or accurate or faithful to Scripture as later generations, but still, nonetheless, they were not heretics. They were not Arians. Is that clear? And they still believe that Jesus is Jehovah God of the Old Testament. Is it making sense? Saint, because the Bible doesn't exist in a vacuum. And the church didn't come into existence when you were born and you became a Christian. So when St. Belligerent asked me, why would I quote extra biblical men as sources? Because whether you like it or not, that's part of your spiritual heritage. That's your spiritual ancestry. That's your history. You can't escape it. These are the same men that God used to preserve the faith, preserve the scriptures, and give us the scriptures. So what kind of statement is this? It's statements like this that trouble me. Yep, exactly on a rule. But if you guys understood why I didn't condemn, right? Why I didn't condemn Chris LaSala, it's because I cannot condemn Tertullian, Irenaeus, Justin Martyr. These were true men and saints of the Lord Jesus Christ. And they were Trinitarian, even though their formulation of the Trinity wasn't as precise or accurate as later generations. Anti-Nicene Fathers means the fathers writing before the Council of Nicaea. The Nicene Fathers means the fathers around the time of Nicaea and shortly after that, right? So is that clear before I move on? Before I move on, I want to, I want to make it clear because now I'm going to show you that Jesus is the Most High God, Jehovah. So the fathers were right in identifying Jesus as Jehovah God. So Chris LaSala is wrong there, right? <clears throat> Chris LaSala is wrong there. But they were wrong to assume that Jesus resided as the reason within God's mind and only became personally differentiated from the Father when the Father summoned him forth to become the agent of creation. Okay, if you're ready, let me know. I might put you guys to sleep. Are you guys ready for some more or is it late? You want me to... Shut down and come back sometime during the week. You guys, put a one if you want me to keep going. Put a two if you're tired. Yep, like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right. Any twos? Or you guys want me to continue? The Nicene Fathers, Alpha and Omega, did not express Jesus' relation to the Father and the Spirit the way the anti-Nicene Fathers did. They would not have said that Jesus was the reason within God's mind and only became personally differentiated from the Father, became personally distinct from the Father when God birthed him, brought him forth out of his heart, out of his mind to become the agent of creation. And so they are much more accurate and closer to how the Bible describes it. All right. Okay, now, what is the proof that Jesus Christ is Jehovah Most High? This is what I shared with Chris LaSalle. I said, Jesus is Jehovah God Most High, even though the Father has authority over him. I go, because it's not either or. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit eternally exists as the one God, Jehovah. And because Jesus is Jehovah, he is the Most High God, supreme over creation, but subject to the Father. So I want you to understand what the Bible teaches. The Bible does teach the Father, by virtue of being the Father, has authority over the Son and the Spirit, especially in light of the fact that the Son is also truly human. But because the Son and the Spirit are one God with the Father, because the Son and the Spirit are also Jehovah God as the Father is, all three of them are the one God, the one true God, Jehovah, and all three of them are the Most High. Now, are you ready for the proofs? Show you the, the proofs of this. I just wrote an article and I posted it <clears throat> on my blog, if you guys are, are ready for it. No, Saint Belligerent. Jehovah is the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to prove that. And if you keep acting up and make stupid comments like a team of three gods, you know you're going to get bounced and blocked, right? Try to curtail and control your stupidity and your blasphemy if you want to remain in the discussion. Final warning. Okay. 
what's the proof that Jesus is Jehovah Most High, even though he's a son of God the Father, with the Father being head over the Son, with him being subject to the Father? You guys ready for the proof? Put it on if you're ready. I'm doing it for you guys here. I'm, I'm up late because I want to serve you guys for the sake of the Lord. Why am I? What's this, man? Why am I drinking this? All right. Yeah, we will. I'm going to mute St. Belligerent. What a nice name. He is belligerent. Okay, let's begin. Number one, first line of evidence. Here's the first line of evidence. Jehovah is the most high God. Jehovah is the most high God. Let's go to Psalm 83, 18. Psalm 83, 18. Yes, Ilaria Irigon. They believe that the father generated the son, begot the son, gave birth to the son in a spiritual sense. And that's what we call the begetting or generation of the son. All right. No, it's sad, St. Belligerent, that you think you're logical and you're open, but you're blinded by your heresy and your satanic doctrine. So bye-bye. Psalm 83, 18. That men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. So who's the most high over all the earth? Who's the most high over all the earth? You guys got it? Now pay attention to the verses, folks. Don't be distraction, distracted. Again, Orbiter, Psalm 83, 18, one more time. Psalm 83, 18, one more time. Okay, watch here. Sorry. NDM Empire, repeat the same question more than once. You won't last long in the room. That men may know that thou, whose name alone is Jehovah, art the most high over all the earth. So he is the most high over all the earth. Okay, now, let's go to Psalm 97, verse 9. Blessed, Brother Rambos, as long as I glorify the charm God and glorify Jesus Christ, the Father's beloved, I am blessed. Psalm 97, 9. Psalm 97, 9. Okay, I'm going to get you the link to my article. Psalm 97, 9. Here's the link to my article. All these verses are in my article to prove that Jesus is Jehovah God Most High. Okay, there you go. Save that link. Psalm 97, verse 9. Read with me. Orbiter, bless you. Thank our brother Orbiter for posting verses. Read. Psalm 97, verse 9. For thou, Lord, Jehovah, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods. So notice, he is high above all the earth. He's exalted far above all gods. Okay, so Jehovah is the Most High over the earth. He's far exalted above all gods. He's exalted higher than the gods, and he's high above the earth. So Jehovah is the most high. Jehovah is the most high. Psalm 7, 17. Psalm 7, 17. Psalm 7, 17. <clears throat> Watch here. Psalm 717. I will praise the Lord. I will praise Jehovah according to his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of Jehovah Most High. Jehovah Most High. So if you're Jehovah, if you're the Lord, you are the Most High. You're far exalted above the gods. You are the Most High over the earth. You are the Most High over creation. Is that clear? You guys got it? Jehovah is the most high over all creation. Jehovah is the most high over all creation. Did you guys get it? I want to make sure you get it. Because I'm going to prove to you that the Bible teaches Jesus is the most high God because he is Jehovah. And yet the Father is the head of the Son. And he's subject to the Father. Okay. Genesis 14, verse 19 and verse 22. Genesis 14, verse 19 and verse 22. So Genesis 14, verse 19 and verse 22. Genesis 14, verse 19 and verse 22. Watch here, guys. Read with me, pay attention, learn and grow by the power of the Holy Spirit. And save my article. Here's my article. Here it is. There it goes. Save it. Watch here. 
Genesis 14, verse 19, and then verse 22. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham, the most of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. Did you catch it? Blessed be Abraham of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. And then 22. And Abraham said to the king of Sodom, meaning <clears throat> the first one was Melchizedek blessing Abraham, who belonged to the Most High God. And then Abraham said to the king of Sodom, I've lifted up my hand unto the Lord Jehovah, the Most High God, the possessor of heaven and earth. So Jehovah is the Most High God. He's Jehovah Most High. He's far exalted above, far above, exalted far above all gods, far above them, and he's the Most High over the earth. So have we established that according to the Hebrew scriptures, if you are Jehovah, you're the most high God. You are exalted far above all gods. You're the most high over the earth, right? You possess heaven and earth, and you're the most high over creation. We've established that, right? Bird brings the word. Thank you for posting verses, but you don't need to. Orbiter is doing it, so thank you. If he's not able to, then maybe you can do it, but thank you. So is it clear? If you're Jehovah, if you're Jehovah, then you're the most high God, correct? Okay, now let's go to Psalm 102, verse 1. Psalm 102, verse 1. Do me a favor. Guys, read it when he posts it. Put Psalm 102, verse 1 and verse 12. Okay, Psalm 102, verse 1 and verse 12. It's all in my article. Okay, because I'm going to show you Jehovah is the Most High God. Jesus is Jehovah. Therefore, Jesus is the Most High God. Okay. No, Hebrews 5.5 5 has nothing to do with Jesus being begotten in order to be used to create the heavens and the earth. Hebrews 5.5 5 is talking about his messianic status. Don't confuse Hebrews 5.5 5 with the eternal generation of the Son. Don't confuse the two. Psalm 102, verse 1. Read with me. Psalm 102, verse 1. Thank our brother Orbiter for posting. Here he posted it. A prayer of the afflicted one. He is overwhelmed and poureth out his complaint before Jehovah. Hear my prayer, O Jehovah. Let my cry come unto thee. Psalm 102 is David praying to Jehovah, crying out to Jehovah. He's talking about Jehovah. Now, Psalm 102, verse 12. Psalm 102, verse 12. Watch here. Yep, keep hitting that like button. Psalm 102, 12. But thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance of all generations. Did you catch it? So David is talking about Jehovah. He's not talking about a creature. He's not talking about Michael or Gabriel. He's talking about Jehovah God Almighty. He's talking about Jehovah. He's praying to Jehovah. He's crying out to Jehovah. Psalm 102, 24 to 27. Psalm 102, verses 24 to 27. Psalm 102, verses 24 to 27. All of this is in the article. I'm going to try to sum it up without going in too much depth so we don't take too much time because there are other points I want to bring up as well. Psalm 102, 24 to 27. Read this with me as he posts it. Watch here. Watch here. Psalm 102, 24 to 27. I said, oh, my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. So David is crying out to God. Oh, my God. Notice what he says about God. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. So he's talking to Jehovah. You of old, Jehovah, laid the foundation of the earth. The heavens are the work of thy hands, your hands, Jehovah. Your hands, Jehovah, made the heavens, not the hands of a creature. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. Now pay attention, folks. Psalm 102 is all about Jehovah. Here David praises Jehovah, and he says, You, Jehovah, you laid the foundation there because you're the creator. The heavens are the work of your hands. They will wear out. You remain the same. You'll roll them up like a garment, but your years remain, right? You're the same, and your years will never end. This is a description that cannot be applied to a creature. You cannot say to a creature, 
You laid the foundation of the earth. The heavens are the work of your hands. You will roll up the heavens and the earth because you're their sustainer. But you're the same and your years will never end. Jehovah alone and only Jehovah can be described in this matter because here David is praising Jehovah for being the unchanging creator and sustainer of all creation. So are, do you see that this is something that can only be said about Jehovah God? Only Jehovah is unchanging in comparison to creation. Jehovah alone created the heavens and the earth by his own power, and he rolls them up and sustains them, and he remains the same, right? Okay, can you get rid of this son of Satan, this wicked, evil agent of Satan? But you understand this description can only be applied to Jehovah? Everyone clear? Only Jehovah is unchanging in comparison to creation, which is changing. Jehovah alone laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of the hands of Jehovah. Right? Is that clear? Bird brings the word. Please don't chime in and ask him what's your question. Please respect my wishes. Why are you engaging someone who says Satan loves me? Do you want to get bounced to? Bird brings the word. Aren't you a little smarter than that, than to fall prey for a trick of the enemy to distract you? Okay, is that clear? Did everyone understand that Psalm 102 can only be attributed to Jehovah? That David is talking about Jehovah, and the things David says cannot be said of a creature, but only Jehovah God. Did you catch it? Only Jehovah is unchanging. Only Jehovah created and sustains the heavens and the earth, right? Those words of Psalm 102, 25, 27 cannot be attributed to a creature. Okay, if you got that, we can go to the next point. Hebrews 1, verses 8 to 12. Hebrews 1, 8 to 12. Let's read. Guys, pay attention. Now, the more you pay attention and the less you communicate via text to one another, the more you'll benefit. Focus, because I want you to learn this, absorb it, and use it for the glory of Jesus. Okay? Hebrews 1, 8 to 12. Now watch here. Okay, watch here. But unto the Son, he saith, now the Father is speaking. Guys, pay attention. Do not lose this point. But unto the Son, he, the Father, says, so the Father speaks to the Son, Notice what he says to the Son. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. So the Father praises and glorifies Jesus, saying, You, Son, you are the God who rules forever. Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever, and a scepter of righteousness is a scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, I, your Father, am your God, because you became flesh, have anointed thee with the oil gladness above thy fellows. Now, here's where it gets interesting, folks. Verses 10 to 12. Watch here. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy year shall not fail. Let's post it again to see what happened. Orbiter, again, post Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Verse 8 says, this is the Father speaking to the Son and about the Son. The Father is speaking to the Son and about the Son. Don't forget this. Please, you got to get this. If you get this, you get the point. And you'll see why Trinitarianism is irrefutable. Because it's based on the sound interpretation of the Holy Bible. Turd goblin, you don't like it? Get lost. Get out of here, dude. Stop barking. Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Watch here. One more time. Pay attention. Pay attention. Let's see if you guys get it. King of Kings, you did it again. Why are you engaging these agents of Satan, King of Kings? They're not here asking sincere questions. What's wrong with you Christians falling prey to the snares of the devil? Come on. No, don't post 8 and 9, Orbiter. Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. See, because you guys are being distracted, you're not focusing. I don't want to waste your time. Don't waste my time. I'm trying to serve you guys because I love you. But you got to pay attention and stop falling prey to the snares of the devil. Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. 
and they wonder why I'm so forthright and just, you know. <sighs> Hebrews 1, 10 to 12, Orbiter. Not 8 and 9. You don't need to post that. That's why I said 10 to 12. Thanks. I don't want to be too loud, man. Okay. Boo -doo 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 -doo. Sorry to do this to you again, Orbiter. Let's do it one more time, brother. Sorry, man. I apologize. I know you just posted it, but this is what happens when King of Kings and this other brother think that they're doing God a favor by engaging people who are here to distract. They're not here to learn and repent. Right? Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. One more time. Sorry, guys. Sorry for the delay. That's why I'll never, never take off on YouTube, man. I just, you know, like a taskmaster. Okay. And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they shall all wax old, as doth a garment. And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy year shall not fail. Now watch here. Because we got distracted, you guys won't make the point. You won't, you won't catch it. Hebrews 1, 10 to 12 is a citation of Psalm 102, 25 to 27. Psalm 102, as we already saw and established, is a psalm of David where he's crying out to Jehovah, invoking Jehovah, and then glorifying Jehovah for being the unchanging creator and sustainer of the heavens and the earth. These words of Hebrews 1, 10 to 12 are from Psalm 102, 25 to 27, right? Where it's talking about Jehovah. Saying things that cannot be said of a creature, it can only be said of Jehovah. Only Jehovah is unchanging in comparison to creation. Jehovah alone created the heavens and earth and sustains them. And he remains the same forever. That very psalm is quoted in Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Did you guys see it? That very psalm was now quoted in Hebrews 1, 10 to 12, which we read twice already. Did you guys see that? I want to see if you catch it. See, if you guys don't let yourselves be distracted and don't let Satan distract you, we can move much more smoothly and faster for the glory of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? So if it's now quoted in Psalm, Psalm 102, 25, 27, it's now quoted in Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. In Hebrews 1, 10 to 12, who is speaking to whom? Who is quoting Psalm 102? And who is he speaking to? Who is he applying Psalm 102 to? Let's see if you caught it. This is why I didn't want you guys to be distracted. Who is quoting Psalm 102 and who is he quoting it to? Who is he applying it to? Who is he, who is he ascribing it to? Let's see if you caught it. So I said don't be distracted and you're letting the enemy distract us. Okay, come on, help me out here. Okay, so who is quoting it? Who is speaking those words? No, not St. Paul on Ruhul. Pay attention again. Paul is saying. That these words are being applied to someone by someone. I don't know. Think about it again. It's starting verse one, verse eight. But about the son, he saith. About the son, he says. Who says this about the son to the son? Most of you got it. You got it. And I'm going to comment. I just want to see. I go slow because I want to make sure you get it, folks. The point of these sessions, you understand it, absorb it. Get it and then share it for the glory of Jesus. So, Al Ruhul, who is quoting these words and who is it being applied to? Paul told you. I just want to make sure our brother Alan Ruhul gets it. You guys got it, but I want to make sure this your brother. Alan, if you go to Hebrews 1 8, it's the father saying it to the son about the son. That's the point. Why do you think I started verse 8? Because it says, about the son, he saith. The father says about the son to the son. And now you have the father taking the prayer of David. 
describing Job as the unchanging creator of the heavens and the earth who sustains all creation. And it's the father taking the words of David and saying it to the son. In Hebrews 1, 10 to 12, it's the father saying to the son, you are that Jehovah. Son, you are that Lord Jehovah. You, my son, laid the foundation of the earth. You, my son, created the heavens by your own hands. The heavens are the work of your hands. You, my son, will roll them up, but you remain the same, and your years shall never end. The father praises, glorifies, magnifies the son as that very Jehovah that David praised, glorifying the son for being the unchanging creator, sustainer of all creation, for being Jehovah God Almighty. Did you guys catch it or no? No, you're not getting, King of Kings, you're not going to get in trouble for responding to what Bert is saying. Because you're on topic and not being distracted. Did you guys catch it? Okay, but hold on. If Jesus is Jehovah, God, the creator and sustainer of the heavens and the earth, and we just saw that Jehovah is the most high God, then that proves Jesus is Jehovah, the most high God. Hold on. Jehovah is the most high God. The Father glorifies Jesus, praises Jesus for being Jehovah God, who created the heavens and the earth. Well, if Jesus is Jehovah God, then he's the most high God. But at the same time, he's not the Father, because the Father is glorifying Jesus as Jehovah, which means the Father is different from Jesus. But at the same time, the Father is Jehovah. So the Father is Jehovah, and he praises his Son for being Jehovah, and Jehovah is the most high God. And yet the Father is Jehovah and the Son is Jehovah, but they're not the same person. Wow. So that means the one God, Jehovah, the one God who is the Most High, Jehovah Most High, is the Father and the Son together. You see how I prove that Jesus is the Most High God? Do you see how I prove it? So if Jehovah is the most high God, Jesus is Jehovah in the flesh. That means Jesus is the most high God. There you go. And yet the father is the head of the son and the son is subject to the father. There you go. But now let me give you another line of evidence that Jesus is Jehovah. And if he's Jehovah, then he's the most high God on the basis of scripture. You can't get around this. Okay, here's another line of evidence. Let's go to Isaiah 40. This is why, guys, focus on the verses. Focus on the discussion. Don't get distracted by side talk. Now let's go all right, to Isaiah 40, verses 3 and 5. Isaiah 40, verses 3 and 5. Now this guy, Ephesians, keeps doing it. He'll post the same thing over and over again, Ephesians 6, 10, 18, because I think he wants me to permanently block him from my, from my channel. Keep it up, Ephesians. Athanasius, I cannot discuss Mark 13, 32 if I'm discussing on a topic. Let me exhort my brothers and sisters on how we'll get the most out of these sessions. If you see my topic is Jesus is the God man, you're not helping yourself or others or me by bringing other questions and issues not related to the topic. Because then that's going to make me go off topic, and so we get nothing accomplished. Can we as Christians who love Jesus exercise some self-constraint and restraint? You see, I'm talking about Jesus being the most high God, and you guys are asking me about Daniel 10 or Isaiah 9. Or, what's that got to do with the topic, guys? What's wrong with us Christians? What is wrong with us Christians? Even James White was chiding one YouTube channel where he said the comments and the questions had nothing to do with the topic at hand. He's right. He's right. Let's go to Isaiah 40, verses 3 and 5. Sorry, guys. I, I know you might not like that I'm being very direct and very strict and harsh. Folks, someone has to maintain order and control. Let me just take a moment and digress before you post anything. Do you know that Paul says that God is not a God of disorder? but a God of order in 1 Corinthians 14, 33. Paul rebukes the Corinthians for 
worshiping in a disorderly, chaotic man manner. And he rebukes him because he says, God is not a God of disorder. He's a God of order, a God of peace. Do you know that the Lord dislikes it when we're disorderly and chaotic, that we can't focus and stay on the same page? What is wrong with us Christians that we can't focus? What's wrong with you guys? What's wrong with me? Come on. Right? 1 Corinthians 14, 33. Paul rebukes the Corinthians for worshiping in an orderly, a disorderly, chaotic manner. People speaking out of turn. Right? No unity. You know, one guy's praying in tongues. The other's prophesying. And a woman starts asking questions all at the same time. Chaos and confusion. And Paul says, what's wrong with you? God is a God of order, not of disorder. So can we, by the power of the Holy Spirit, exercise self-control, self-constraint, self-restraint for the glory of Jesus, the Son of the Most High, whom we love? Can you help me to help you? Okay. Here's the other line of evidence showing Jesus is Jehovah God. Okay. Isaiah 40, verses 3 and 5. Isaiah 40, verses 3 and 5. Read with me, guys. Focus. Isaiah 40, verses 3 to 5. I'm sorry. Don't skip 4. One more time. And thank our brother Orbiter, who is patiently posting away, and he's tired. It's late. He doesn't get paid for this. He can be sleeping. First and last in Orbiter. Helping me. Always posting verses. God bless them. Okay. Let's do it again. See, NDME's got to leave. I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna go to your channel. I'm gonna block you right now. Hold on, NDME, let me block you. Hold on, my friend. It's gonna be my pleasure. Hold on, one second. Hold on, friend. Sorry, because he didn't learn his lesson. You see, as an agent of Satan, I just wasted time on him. But here, it's okay, Andy. Here you go, my friend. Enjoy the block. Okay. Isaiah 40, 3 and 5. Go ahead, folks. 40 verses 3 and 5. Pray for me that God will sanctify me to become more like Jesus in patience, self-control. Because I need it too. I'm a sinner, an imperfect vessel. Okay. Isaiah 40 verse 3 and 5. Adios, rainbow. Sorry about that, guys. 40 verses 3, 4, and 5, 35. He posted it, but because of that, again, satanic nuisance, see what happens? Yeah, Orbiter keeps keep skipping 4. Orbiter, don't be afraid. 4 is not going to bite you. 4 is your friend. I don't know why you don't like 4. Yeah. Michael James, hello, Sam. How are you? Sorry, folks, for delay, man. Okay, Rainbow. Hasta la vista, baby. All right. The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of Jehovah the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway of our God. Every valley shall be exalted. Every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain. And the glory of Jehovah the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord Jehovah has spoken it. I bet you guys didn't even catch the prophecy. Because of all the distractions, we plead the blood of Jesus Christ to cover us. He didn't catch the prophecy. What is Isaiah saying is going to take place? Let's see if you guys paid attention. Three to five. A voice of him that crieth in the wilderness. A voice is going to shout out in the wilderness. And what is he going to shout out? Prepare ye. All of you get ready. Be prepared for the way of Jehovah the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Highway for our God. And now let's skip to five. And the glory of Jehovah shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of Jehovah has spoken it. Okay, let's see if you guys caught it. This prophecy says, a voice will shout out in the wilderness, announcing to, to the people that someone is coming. I didn't ask who the voice is. Don't read New Testament yet. The voice cries out, prepare ye the way of. This voice in the wilderness is going to prepare people for the coming of who? For the coming of who? Let's see if you got it. Don't quote New Testament. What did the prophecy in Isaiah say? 
The voice in the wilderness is preparing for the coming of who? Let's get it. See, Tipple Bear, Bear didn't listen. I'll give you 10 million bucks, Tipple Bear, if you show me the word Jesus in Isaiah. Lisa, I'll give you 20 million bucks if you show me the word Messiah. See, you guys are not paying attention. Most of you are, thank God. You're getting it. It's okay, cue the one. Okay. Isaiah 40, verse 3 and 5. Now skip 4, post it again. Isaiah 40, verse 3 and 5, skip 4. One more time. You're going to appreciate why I am such a stickler to details and like, quote unquote, a harsh taskmaster, because I want to drill this in you by the power of the Holy Spirit, drill it in you by the power of the Holy Spirit, drill it in you until it becomes second nature by the power of the Holy Spirit, so you can teach others. That's why I'm doing it. I want you to teach others who Jesus is and who our God is. Okay, let's try it again. The voice in the wilderness cries out and he prepares for who? It's right there, the verses. Whose glory shall be revealed? Whose glory will all flesh see? Who is the one who's going to come when the voice in the wilderness prepares for his coming? Loris K, I'll give you $50,000 million if, to show me the word Messiah. So you're not listening too. Everyone else got it. Who is going to come? Whose glory will all flesh see when the voice in the wilderness prepares for his coming? Jehovah, the Lord, our God. When you tell me, Messiah, you're destroying your entire apologetic. You're destroying your entire apologetic. You know that, right? Because what are you trying to prove? Jesus is Jehovah God. But when you say, oh, the Messiah, you just destroyed you're apologetic in proving that Jesus is Jehovah in the flesh. Why are you doing that? Why are you making it harder for, for yourselves? Why are you making the case harder for yourself? Just go with the language of the text. The voice cries out in preparation for Jehovah. It doesn't say Messiah. It doesn't say the son of David. It doesn't say the king of Israel, the anointed king of Israel from the line of David. It says, Jehovah, our God, his glory, all flesh will see. The voice is saying, get ready. Jehovah, our God is coming. You get it now? You got it? So let's try it again. The voice in the wilderness is preparing Israel for the coming of, the appearance of, who? According to Isaiah 40. Who? I want to see you got it. Yeah, Ephesians. The reason why the teacher gets irritable because of brats like you who try to get attention because you're agents of Satan. Right? That's why teachers get irritated and why punks like you make it bad for everyone else. That's why they put you in the corner with a dunce hat on top of your head. Shut your mouth. No one wants you to you hear you whine and cry. Cry, right? Okay. Lydia said Jesus again. Okay, Lydia, I think you're doing it deliberately. Lydia, hold on, sister. Hold on. Let me make it easy for you. One second. Lydia, well done. Lydia, can you say one again? Because I'm going to send two of you on your merry way. Hold on. Okay. Lie, lie. Yeah. Everyone got it, right? The voice in the wilderness is going to prepare the coming of. This gets harder for me, man. I, maybe I'm getting old. I don't know. God have mercy on me. Forgive me. Crucify my flesh. It gets hard, man. Lydia, why did you say Jesus again when I told you the word Jesus is not in Isaiah 40? Help me understand, sister. Did you do that deliberately? I just, I'm just curious. I want to know why. Jesus bless you too, 316. Okay, everyone got it, right? It's Jehovah our God. Prepare ye the way of Jehovah. Make a highway for our God. Jehovah, our God is coming. Jehovah, our God is coming. Jehovah, our God is coming. Is that clear? Jehovah, our God. 
that's who the voice is preparing for in the wilderness. He's not praying, preparing for a created angel, Gabriel, or merely a human son of David, a merely human king. He's preparing for Jehovah, our God. Prepare ye the way of Jehovah. Make a highway for our God so that the voice in the wilderness is telling Israel, get ready. Jehovah, our God, is about to show up. We're going to see his glory. Did you guys get that? I took too much time on making that point. Sorry, guys. Did you guys get it? Bird, you don't need to chime in and comment and come to people's defense. Can you stop trying to be the good Samaritan because you're not being a good Samaritan? Please, Bird. Okay. All right. We got that, right? Let's go to Malachi 3, verse 1. The second one. How you doing, John? The second one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I do love you guys. Honestly, it's it's my love for Jesus that I'm teaching. And because of him, I love you and I want you to get this. That's my frustration. I want you to get this. Jim, I want you to learn this so you can share it and use it for the glory of Christ. Because he's worthy that we all know this and live it and proclaim it. Okay, Malachi 3.1. Okay, focus now. Focus, focus, focus. In Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Here's the other prophecy, Malachi 3.1. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom ye shall seek shall suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant whom ye delight in, behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. Did you catch this other prophecy? God is speaking, says, I will send my messenger, prepare the way before me. Then the Lord, pay attention, please, the Lord, Hebrew is ha-adon, ha-adon, shall come. To his temple. His temple. Okay. Malachi 3.1. The God is speaking. I will send my messenger before me. And when my messenger comes. Then. After my messenger comes. Then the Lord will come. To his temple. The temple in Jerusalem. Belongs to this Lord who is coming. When will this Lord come? After the messenger is sent to prepare for his coming. How do we know this is Jehovah God? Two things. The word the Lord in Hebrew is ha-adon. This exact phrase, these two words, ha-adon, are never used for anyone other than Jehovah. The words the Lord in Malachi 3.1, ha-adon, are only used of Jehovah God. Only used of Jehovah God. Okay, Hagopian, you're not the gentleman that was on the Facebook page. That guy made a hard time. I blocked, right? I hope it's not you because I love you. If you're not him and if you are him i love you enough to block you anyway now let's go to isaiah 124 exactly it can be transliterated that way revelation 22 13 or even this way ha -adon. either way okay let me show you the word ha -adon, used of jehovah now again remember what i just said the word the lord in hebrew is ha -adon. those two words that phrase ha -adon, is only used of jehovah it's never used for anyone besides jehovah Example, Isaiah 124. Isaiah 124. Therefore saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel. Did you catch it? Therefore saith Ha'adon, Yahweh Sabaoth, Jehovah of hosts. Ha'adon, the Lord, who's Jehovah of hosts, the mighty one. The phrase Ha'adon or Ha'adon, the Lord, which is the words used in Malachi 3.1, are only used of Jehovah. Okay, that's one. That's one line of evidence. The second line of evidence that this Lord is Jehovah God, let's look at Malachi 3 1 again. Malachi 3 1 again. Watch here. Sorry about the delay. We're waiting for Arbiter to post Malachi 3 1. All right. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple. So the second light of evidence. 
Whoever this Lord is, the temple in Jerusalem is his. The Lord is coming to his temple. The temple in Jerusalem belongs to this Lord who is coming. Now let's go to 1 Chronicles 29 verse 1 to see whether the temple is built for a creature, for humans, or for God Almighty alone. 1 Chronicles 29 verse 1. And he's also called the angel of the covenant. This Lord Ha'adon who's coming to his temple in Jerusalem is the angel of the covenant, the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts, Jehovah of hosts. Okay. I'm showing you how you prove Jesus is Jehovah God in the flesh. Okay, now let's go to 1 Chronicles 29 verse 1. Watch here. Furthermore, David the king said unto all the congregation, Solomon, my son, whom alone God hath chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great. For the palace, the temple that Solomon's going to build in Jerusalem, is not for man, but for the Lord God, Jehovah God. So did you catch it? That temple, that palace in Jerusalem, is not built for man. It's built for Jehovah God. But wait, Malachi 3.1 says, God is going to send a messenger to prepare for his coming. And when the messenger comes, after him will come the Lord, Ha'adon, to his temple. Ha'adon, that phrase is only used of Jehovah, and the temple is built for Jehovah alone. So here, let me ask you guys a question. If the words Ha'adon only apply to Jehovah, they're only used of Jehovah, and the temple was built only for Jehovah and not a creature, not a man. That isn't this proof that the messenger is being sent to prepare for the coming of Jehovah God Almighty to his temple? Isn't this proof that Malachi, like Isaiah, is prophesying? A messenger will be sent to prepare the people for the coming of Jehovah God to his temple in Jerusalem. Clear? Did you guys catch it? If you're confused, put it to and ask me to clarify. Everyone got it? No twos. Okay. So let's combine the two prophecies together and let's sum up. You don't need to post these, Orbiter. According to Isaiah 40, a voice in the wilderness will cry out to Israel saying, Prepare the way of Jehovah, make a highway for our God. So this voice in the wilderness is going to tell people, get ready, Jehovah our God is coming. Malachi 3.1 confirms God sends a messenger to prepare for the coming of God. And when the messenger shows up, right after his coming, the Lord Ha'adon, a phrase used only of Jehovah, will come to his temple. So two prophecies say, Jehovah God, the Lord, is coming to his own temple, to his people. He's going to visit his people after he sends a messenger who is the voice crying in the wilderness, preparing them for the coming of Jehovah God Almighty, right? I'm insulted when this guy tells me, make it clear that the word temple is the real temple or Christians as temple or the third temple. Historically, the only temple that Malachi could be speaking of is the temple in Jerusalem. Okay, now, is that clear? Did you guys get it? Isaiah 40, Malachi 3 says, an envoy, a messenger, will be sent. This messenger will cry out in the wilderness, preparing people for the coming of Jehovah, our God, Israel's God, who is the Lord, Ha'adon, coming to his temple. Did you guys get it? Did you guys get it? Okay. Let's see who the voice in the wilderness and the messenger of Malachi 3 happens to be. Mark 1, verses 1 of 4. Mark 1, verses 1 of 4. Okay. Took me much, mo much longer than I thought to make this point. Bird brings the word, you will be banned. Because you're having side discussions and not focusing on the topic at hand. One more time, Bird. 
and I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ban you. Because you're not here to listen and learn, but you just want to preach and pontificate. Mark 1, verses 1 of 4. Okay, let's read. Let's read with me. Who is the voice in the wilderness? The messenger of Malachi 3.1. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Notice what Mark is going to quote. Pay attention, folks. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. That's Malachi 3.1. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. Did you catch it? No, Lizzie, it's not your fault. It's Bird, because Bird always has to chime in and respond to questions not asked of Bird. You asked the question, Bird had to chime in because Bird wants attention, wants people to see. Look at me, I know the Bible too. It means that Bird is suffering. From vanity, and may God have mercy on Bird and me and all of us. Okay, now in Malak, Mark 1, verses 1 of 4, did you catch it? Mark says, Here's the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ that was announced in Malachi 3 1 and Isaiah 40. He quotes Malachi 3 1, Isaiah 40. Let's look at Malachi, uh, Mark 1, verse 3 and 4 again. Mark 1, verses 3 and 4. Folks, it's vanity when someone comes here and wants to pontificate and get involved because that means they want attention to be recognized their Bible teachers. May the Lord crucify our flesh, destroy our flesh, keep us humble because it's not about us and getting attention. It's about the glory of Christ. When a teacher teaches, sit and be the student. Stop pontificating. Okay. Mark 1, 3 to 4. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Now notice Mark 1, 4. After quoting these two prophecies, notice what Mark says. John did baptize in the wilderness. Is that a coincidence? He just quoted Isaiah 40, verse 3, about a voice crying in the wilderness. And the next verse, he says, John began his ministry in the wilderness. What does Mark want you to see, folks? Ephesians is a perfect example of a dog used of Satan to distract. So we muzzle dogs and send them bye-bye. Okay. What does Mark want you to see? After telling you about Isaiah 40, the prophecy, right, of a voice in the wilderness, and then he mentioned John beginning his ministry in the wilderness. What does he want you to see? That John is the messenger, the voice. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Got it. He is the messenger of Malachi 3.1, who's preparing for the Lord to come to his temple. He's the voice of Isaiah 40, who prepares for Jehovah, Israel's God, to show up. We got that, right? Okay, let's go to John 1, 23, say how the Baptist identifies himself. It took much longer than necessary for me to finish this point. It really did. John 1, 23. Sorry, guys. Apologize. Hopefully, by the grace of God, in due course, in due time, people will understand how to conduct themselves in these sessions for the glory of Jesus Christ. Freddie, no, my friend. Just pray God will provide for me. I am in full-time ministry. As long as you come with an open heart and mind to learn and help me to help you and not cause me to stumble, I will teach you from my heart by the power of the Spirit for the glory of Christ. Okay, Freddie Mills? But if you come here and distract me and attack me and criticize and try to seek attention, we're not going to last long with each other. John 1, 23, he said, John the Baptist said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Esaias. Did you catch it? John identified himself. He said, look, I am that voice of Isaiah 40, verse 3. I am the voice in the wilderness that Isaiah said would come. Make right straight the way of the Lord. I am that voice. See, even John the Baptist identified himself that way, right? Did you guys catch it? 
John said, hey, Jews, I am the voice that Isaiah said with cry out of the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord. I am him. Mark says John the Baptist is the voice in the wilderness of Isaiah 40 and the messenger of Malachi 3.1. John the Baptist said he's the voice that Isaiah said would cry out in the wilderness, preparing people for the Lord. Did Jesus say that John is the messenger of Malachi 3.1? Let's go to Matthew 11, verse 10. What did Jesus say? I know that, Freddie. I was just saying that in general for others who come to distract, not learn. What did Jesus say about John? Matthew 11, 10. Matthew 11, 10. Yep, you got it, Jesus, Messiah God. Now, notice what Jesus says. Jesus speaking of John the Baptist. Notice what he says. Jesus speaking of John the Baptist is, For this is he of whom it is written. This is he, John the Baptist is him, of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Did you catch it? Do you guys catch it? Jesus agrees. Malachi 3.1 is about John the Baptist. That message of Malachi 3.1 is John the Baptist. That's what Jesus said. Mark, in agreement with his Lord, says, yeah, John the Baptist is the messenger of Malachi 3.1. And John the Baptist says, I'm the voice crying out in the wilderness that Isaiah prophesied. So do you see Jesus and Mark and the Baptist all agree John is the messenger of Malachi 3.1, the voice in the wilderness of Isaiah 40. Matthew agrees, Matthew 3.3. Luke agrees, Luke 3, verses 3 to 6. Now the question is, since John the Baptist is that messenger of Malachi 3.1, the voice crying in the wilderness of Isaiah 40, that means John is preparing the people for the coming of Jehovah, their God, Ha'adon, the Lord, who is coming to his temple in Jerusalem. That's who's supposed to show up. But hold on. Let's go to Acts 19 verse 4 to see whom did the Baptist prepare the way for. Acts 19 verse 4. Let's see. Acts 19, verse 4. Watch here. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptisms of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. Hmm. John the Baptist prepared people for the coming of Christ, pointed people to Jesus Christ. Hmm. Let's go to John 1, 26 to 29. John 1, 26 to 29. Read with me. Does John the Baptist agree? I was sent to prepare for Jesus Christ. John 1, 26 to 29. Isabel, thank you, sister, but Orbiter is posting for us, so thank you. John 1, 26 to 29. Notice what the Baptist says. Pay attention, guys. Watch here. Sorry, folks, that I'm kind of tough with you guys. I don't want to be because you're not kids. You're my brothers, sisters in Christ. But sometimes I have to be tough to maintain order. John 1, 26, 29. Read. John answered, saying, I baptize you with water. But there... Standeth one among you, whom ye know not. He it is who coming after me is preferred, be, preferred before me, whose shoes latch it, I am not worthy to unloose. These things were done in Beth Lord Jesus, loosen my tongue. Bathabara, Bathabara, beyond Jordan, man, these words, where John was baptizing. So what did John say? I baptize you with water, but there, there's one who stands among you, whom you know not. He comes after me, but is preferred before me. I'm not worthy to untie the latchet of his sandals. He's too great for me. I'm not even good enough to be his slave, right? He's coming. Now watch John 1, 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Hmm. Now post John 1, 30 to 36. John 1, 30 to 36. Notice what he says. Lord Jesus, loosen my tongue. I have a lisp, and it becomes more pronounced as I get tired. Holy suffering thuckatath. 
John 1, 30, 36. Pay attention, folks. We're almost done, man. Long night, I know. John 1, 30 to 36. Yep. He's not worthy to untie the latchet of Jesus' sandals, which was a function of slaves. Servants, slaves, would, would untie the latchet of the sandals of their master and provide water to wash their feet. He's saying, I'm not even good enough to be his slave. John 1, verses 30 to 36. Watch here. John continues. Notice he says, the next day when he saw Jesus, behold, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sin of the world. Now notice what he says about Jesus. Guys, pay attention. This is he of whom I said, after me cometh a man, which is preferred before me. For he was before me, and I know him not, but that he should be made manifest Israel. Therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. Now watch what happens at 33 to 36, as Orbiter posts it. Watch here, folks. Notice who John came to prepare for. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water. The same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining on him, the same is he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. And again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, notice what he says again, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. So John the Baptist himself says, I am the voice crying in the wilderness that Isaiah said would come. I am the one sent to prepare for one who is much greater than me, infinitely greater than me. He is so great and pure. I'm not good enough to be his slave. I'm not worthy enough to untie the latchets of his sandals. I'm baptized with water. He baptized with Holy Spirit. He's preferred above me because he's before me. And that one is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, the Son of God who takes away the sin of the world. That's the one I'm talking about. But hold on. Wait. Isaiah 40 said that John the Baptist is going to prepare Israel for the coming of Jehovah their God. Malachi 3.1 says that John the Baptist is that messenger who will be sent to prepare people for the coming of the Lord, Ha'adon, a phrase used only of Jehovah, the Lord who comes to his temple, a temple built for Jehovah. And yet John the Baptist prepared for Jesus. Interesting. John the Baptist, you're the messenger of Malachi 3.1. Yes, Jesus said you are. Mark said you are. John the Baptist, you're the voice in the wilderness crying out loud to the Israelites saying, prepare the way of Jehovah, make a highway of our God. Yes, John said he is. All the writers said he was. Mark said it. Matthew 3.3 3 says John is that voice. Luke 3 verses 3 to 6 says John is that voice. John 1.23, John said it, right? And yet John the Baptist and Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and the book of Acts, Paul and Acts 19.4 say, John the Baptist came to prepare for the coming of Jesus. But I'm confused. John is preparing for Jehovah, Israel's God, to show up. John is preparing for Ha'adon, the Lord, a phrase used only of Jehovah, to come to his temple, a temple built only for the worship of Jehovah. And yet John the Baptist prepares for Jesus Christ. And the one who shows up after John the Baptist is Jesus Christ in the flesh. What does that make Jesus? Who does that make Jesus? It makes Jesus Ha'adon, the Lord. And it means the temple is built for the worship of Jesus. And it means Jesus is Jehovah, Israel's God, the God of Isaiah, the God that Isaiah said was going to show up. Do you guys catch it now? I lost it few viewers okay what's the point hold on we began by saying the hebrew bible says jehovah is the most high god jehovah is exalted far above all gods he's the most high over the earth so jehovah is the most high god we just established through two lines of evidence jesus is jehovah god almighty in the flesh the unchanging creator sustainer of Psalm 102, 25, 27, Jehovah, Israel's God, that Isaiah said was to come, the Lord that Malachi said would be coming to his temple, Jesus is that Jehovah who became flesh, and yet if he's Jehovah in the flesh, the incarnation of Jehovah, the physical embodiment of Jehovah, that means Jesus is Jehovah, the Most High God.
You can't escape it. You can't escape it. So is Jesus the most high God? Most definitely. But hold on. Jesus is not the father. He's the son of the father. The son of God. The lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And it's the Father who is Jehovah that praises Jesus and glorifies Jesus for being Jehovah of Psalm 102, the unchanging creative sustainer of all things. That means the one God, Jehovah, is more than one person. If the Father is Jehovah and he's not the Son, and the Son is Jehovah, that means Jehovah exists at least as two persons. That means the Father and Son together are the Most High God, and yet the Father is still head over the Son. Hmm. Yep, John did know about the crucifixion. He's a sacrificial lamb that would take away our sin. Are you with me there? Am I too loud? Alan Ruhul, I don't know if he left. I think it was late for him. But you guys get it? Because I want to end it by showing you that Jesus can't be a creature. The irrationality of Arianism. We're going to end it with this. Okay? This is all in my articles, rebuttals that you'll find on answeringislam.net and answeringislamblog.wordpress.com, as well as in some of the sessions on my own YouTube page. Subscribe to it, hit the like button, pass it on. And one thing I just want to repeat I'm not looking for trolls, I'm not looking for people to pontificate, want attention, start side conversations to distract people. I'm looking for sincere students of the Bible who want to learn this material, understand it, absorb it, make it second nature by the power of the Holy Spirit so they can share it and fall more passionate in love with the triune God. If that's you, you are welcome. But if you're here because you want attention and you want to pontificate and impress people with your knowledge or distract, go somewhere else. Amen, Freddie Mills. By the power of the Holy Spirit, it will be. Final line of evidence. Okay, and we're going to, we'll be done. Sorry, folks. I know I'm not easy to handle or tolerate because I'm not here to waste time. I do love you for the sake of Jesus. It's because of the Holy Spirit convicting me to serve Jesus that I'm doing this because Jesus says, if you love him, feed the sheep. And I'm trying by the power of the Spirit to feed my brothers and sisters as the Spirit feeds me for the glory of Christ. I love you for the sake of the Lord. But as you can see, May God give me more patience. I don't tolerate distractions. <clears throat> I don't tolerate chaos. I don't tolerate people trying to come and impress me with their knowledge. Right? When I go to a teaching session and a teacher teaches, I sit and listen. Right? And that's what I expect others to do. If I'm teaching, listen. If you're teaching, I'll listen. But now, final argument so we can move on. Here's the final argument. If Jesus is a creature, a creature like Arians taught, then a creature needs a place to dwell. For example, angels are spirit creatures that dwell in heaven. They need a dwelling place. This is why biblically the heavens were created before the angels. And when the heavens were created, then the angels were created to live in heaven. Likewise, human beings were created to live on earth. They had a dwelling place. The earth was created, and then humans were created to live on earth. So if you're a creature, a creature needs a place to dwell in. Angels are spirit creatures. They dwell in heaven. Heaven was created first. Their dwelling place was created first, and then they were created to live there in heaven. The earth was created first, and then human beings were created to live on earth. So you understand, if you're a creature... By definition, as a creature, you're bound to time, space, and place. Everyone got it? Freddie Mills, I pray I continue to be used of the Spirit to bless you for the glory of Christ. And everyone else. Okay, you understand my point, right? Angels are creatures who are bound to time, space, and place. So they need a dwelling place. That's why their dwelling place, heaven, was created before them. You with me there? Heaven was created and then the angels to live there. Earth was created, and then man was created to live on earth. Angels were not created before their dwelling place. Humans were not created before their dwelling place. Their dwelling places were created first, and then they were created to live in those dwelling places. 
Man was created to live on earth, so the earth was created before man. Angels were created to live in heaven, so the heavens were created before angels. Okay. A creature is bound to time, space, and place and needs a dwelling place. Don't forget this. The only being that doesn't need a place or space and doesn't exist in time is God. Because God created time. He created space. He created place. That means God by nature is spaceless, placeless, doesn't occupy time, space, or matter. Right? Only God. His existence is beyond comprehension. We don't know how he exists. Right? We know he exists because we exist. If he didn't exist, we wouldn't exist. But God is the only being who doesn't need time, space, or place. The only being. And before creation of heavens and earth, all you had was God. God just existing as he is. Not existing in a place, not existing in space, and not bound to time. Something that's beyond our ability to comprehend. We cannot comprehend that. That's why he's unlike us. He's infinitely greater than us. And we bow in humbleness before his greatness. Right? Only God exists before time, space, and place. Everyone got it. If you got it, put a one. If you're confused, put a two. If you're confused, put a two. If not, here's my point. Here's an argument that decimates, biblically destroys. Revelation 22, 13, you need to get this. It decimates, destroys Arianism, Jehovah's Witnesses. According to Arians, especially modern-day Arians, Jehovah's Witnesses, Jesus is the first creature of God. But those same Arians will tell you that Jesus created the heavens and the earth. Or they won't say he created the heavens and the earth. They'll say God created through him. Jesus was an agent, a passive agent, through whom God created. They don't even like to say Jesus created. They'll say, no, God the Father created through Jesus. He was a passive instrument, right, a passive agent. Okay, fine. That doesn't matter. But they do believe God created the heavens through Jesus. So Jesus exists before the heavens. And they'll quote the passages that we cite to show it. For example, let's go back to Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Hebrews 1, 10 to 12, which is a passage applied to Jesus. One more time. Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Watch here. First and last, you know where I'm going with this. I wrote an article on this, and I'm going to share the link with you in a minute. Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Yep, I have an article on this. It's called The Irrationality of Arianism. I'll post it in a minute. Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Whom did the Father use to create the heavens? Whom did the Father use to create the heavens? Watch here. Watch here. As Orbiter posts it, Hebrews 1, 10 to 12. Okay, before the rapture. Yeah, but we got to quote the verse. Okay, read. And thou, Lord, remember in the context of the Father speaking to the Son. Thou, Lord, my Son, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. Did you catch it? The Father says to the Son, you are the Lord, and you made the heavens with your hands. You made the heavens with your hands, right? You made the heavens with your hands. Did you see it? Whose hands created the heavens? Jesus, right? Well, if Jesus created the heavens by his hands, that means Jesus was there before the heavens were made. He created the heavens, and it says, and you laid the foundation of the earth. So even Joe's witnesses will admit the Father used the Son to create the heavens and the earth. They'll admit that. Yes, Jesus was there before the heavens and the earth. They can't deny it because they believe these passages. One more, Colossians 1, 15 and 16. Watch here. Watch what's going to happen, guys. Get ready. Watch. First last already knows where I'm going with this. Praise God. Watch here. Colossians 1, 16 and 17. Watch here. Colossians 1, 15 to 16. Not 16, 17. I'm sorry. Because I'm always quoting 16 to 17. Colossians 1, 15 to 16. If you want to include 17, that's fine, but you got to include 15 to see that this is referring to the Son. Colossians 1, 15 to 16. Watch here. You can include 17 too, but 16 is the key. But you got to add 15 to see that here Paul is talking about the Son's role in creation. Okay. Colossians 1, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Even a Jehovah's Witness will say that's Jesus. 
who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Now pay attention, 16. For by him were all things created. Every great thing was made by Jesus that are in heaven and that are on earth, visible, invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. Did you catch it? And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. So here it says, the Father employed the Son to create all creation. All things here means all creation. So Jesus created the heaven and everything in heaven. He created the earth and everything on the earth. That's what it says. And a Jehovah's Witness will say, yeah, the Father created through the Son, and through the Son, the Father created the heavens and the earth and everything in it. So they'll admit that Jesus existed before the heavens and the earth. But folks, hold on. Here's the problem. Pay attention now. Pay attention. Ben Smith, forget about the word other. doesn't matter. Focus now. Since Jesus is a creature, and a creature is bound to time, space, and place, which means a creature needs a place to dwell in, and since they say Jesus is the first creation of God, but Jesus existed before there was space and place, because Jesus was the one who created the heavens and the earth, which means he existed before heavens and earth came into being. So he existed before there was space and place. Where was Jesus dwelling? Let that sink in. Where was Jesus dwelling? The Bible and even Joe's witnesses admit the Father used the Son to create the heavens, everything in them, to create the earth and everything on it. That means he's older than the heavens and the earth. That means he existed before there was space and place. That means Jesus existed when there was no space or place for him to dwell in. Where did he exist? Where was he dwelling? Emmanuel still doesn't get it. Why are you speaking as a Trinitarian? The Joe Witness say Jesus is a creature. Creatures, by definition, are bound to time, space, and place and need a place to live in. That's why the heavens were created before the angels, because the angels needed a place to live in when they were created. The earth was created before man because man needed the place to live on before he was created. But if Jesus is a creature created, where was he dwelling before the heavens and the earth were made? Because before the heavens and the earth, there is no space, there is no place, there is no time. But if they say he's dwelling in the Father, nothing in the Father is a creature. Nothing in the Father is a creature because God is eternal by nature. So if he's in the Father, then he's not a creature. He's eternal. Bam. Thank you, Lois. Bam. That's what I want you to say. You get it? Let me give you the two articles again. The one that shows that Jesus is the Most High God. Here's one. And then... The article on Arianism. You see how the Bible destroys these blasphemies, these lies, makes mockery of Arianism, proving that Jesus is eternal, uncreated, eternally one with the Father and the Spirit. And that if you try to show otherwise, the Bible exposes you as a fool and a blasphemer. So that's one article. Now let me get you the article on the irrationality of Arianism where I go in-depth on this one argument. This one argument, I wrote an article on this a while back. Here it goes. Study this material. <clears throat> Learn to apply it. Make it second nature. Share it in your witness and pass it on to others for the glory of Jesus. Here you go. And we're done for tonight. Here you go. Yes, it's, it is spiritual blindness. Here's the article on this one argument where Jesus cannot be a creature because that would show the irrationality of Arianism or what we would call modern-day Jehovah's Witnesses. There you go. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Jesus Christ is Jehovah in the flesh to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Father, we love you. Lord Jesus, we love you. Holy Spirit, we love you. Forgive me for my shortcomings. Save me from my flesh. Save us from our flesh. Save us from Satan. Save us 
from the world and its influence and save our loved ones. Save my daughters, Father. Lord Jesus, save them. Holy Spirit, save them and provide over, over abundantly for them and seal them for the glory of Jesus and use me in their lives and save me from my trials. We love you, Father, Son, and Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. We're going to be live streaming tomorrow, David Wood, El Fadi, Christian Prince, and I. And we're going to be on throughout the whole week doing live shows. So make sure you subscribe to my page, David Wood's page, and Al Fadi's page, Sierra International, and that you're on Facebook because there is where you're going to find the announcements when we're going to be on live. But again, let me remind you of my pressing need. June 26, you prayer warriors. I need you to pray and fast and ask your prayer warriors to pray and fast for me and my daughters because June 26, they're trying to come after me for a financial burden, an amount that I cannot afford that will bankrupt me and leave me pretty much homeless and unable to do ministry. If there, if there was a time that I needed Jesus to show up, I need him to show up June 26, favor me and my children, protect me and the finances from this wicked corrupt judicial system a system of satan being used of the the enemy of the devil to reward immorality and punish the servants of god i need the lord to show up on june 26 can you pray for me and fast for me for victory so that satan will not use this to stop me from glorifying christ that i continue to glorify christ until i die and to provide for my daughters so please pray i really need a miracle love you guys subscribe to the youtube channel Listen to the session more than once until the arguments become second nature and pass this on. And again, tell people, warn them before, beforehand. If you come here, cause distractions, chaos, mock, ridicule, then I'm going to tear into you. But if you come here with a humble, contrite attitude, a willingness to learn, then I will serve you and teach you and pour into you for the glory of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Love you guys. Christ is risen, risen indeed. I hope you're blessed. Please pray for that miracle. June 26, God, save me from this onslaught and give me favor because I cannot do it. Lord Jesus, I trust in you. You are my shield and my daughter's shield. Fight for us in Jesus' name. Take care, folks. I love you. Christ is risen, risen indeed.